Hello guys and welcome to our brand new video. Today I am here with Jojo's Bizarre Adventure Stone Ocean Part 2 Episode Number 7 Reaction. Alright, the previous episode, um, we, it was a defeat. We were able to defeat uh, Kenzo and his uh, stand, I think Drake's Dream, that was the stand's name. And uh, Foo Fighters with, obviously in the end, a little bit of assistance from um, Anasui were able to defeat this person. Now, there's quite a few things we got to see over there. First of all, the battle itself was very good. You know, uh, the way, um, what do you call it? The way um, Foo Fighters used uh, the lucky direction to save herself or a, a little bit, a little part of herself, the planktons, you know, on the lucky direction, the puddle of water that she used to save herself for Jolene to come and, you know, kind of transfer her back to her body to revive her you know like that that was really intelligent kenzo kind of got caught off guard for a moment and uh, he thought he had won the match but it kind of backfired like that and still he was going to attack us and probably deal a lot of damage to Jolene. but uh anasui obviously has the um what do you call it the duty to protect Jolene. that's like the the main thing that he said that the only thing i'm going to do is protect you if something happens i'm not going to interfere in anything else so as soon as Jolene was in danger, uh, Anasui came and helped her out. And we get to see Anasui's uh, other uh, function of her uh, of his stand ability, which is he can get in his stand can get inside people and protect them. And in doing so, uh, the opponent who who the stand is going to touch or who is going to interact with. He can easily dismantle their body into a plasma gel like substance and like you know kind of rearrange their body internally in a matter of seconds that's a crazy power you know like in a matter of seconds like and i feel like that's the the most dangerous the most scary part of his stand is that it takes not no time at all he could just like you know, in a matter of seconds he can do that that's the scary part of his stand and uh, yeah so we saw that and kenzo is completely down now obviously we in the end we see that guy with the bone we don't know who that person is is he an ally or is he an enemy it looks like he is an enemy but i don't know maybe he will turn out to be ally because jojo's bizarre adventure kind of does stuff like that <laughs> now and then you know like uh, characters who seem like a villain later on kind of become our ally so who knows we'll see but either way uh, there's also that guy the guy with the helmet i forgot about him I don't I, I don't know what he's going to do is he going to interfere or not since Kenzo is gone um yeah let's see let's see what happens today this is episode number seven so yeah I'll be putting the subtitles on the timer here sync it to whichever is your preference and let's get started okay here's the countdown three two one Here we go. Rain heart. Oh, this is Jotaro's. Hmm. Oh, wow. Okay. Normal. Thirty English words. Yeah, his memory is gone. So what's up with this guy's ears? Looks like an elf. Uh, okay, that's why all the IV drip and everything. Yeah. What are you doing? Oh my god. Whoa! That Joe. <laughs> yeah.
Julian, they... So his stand kind of remembers. I... Yeah. So, like in the deep recess of his memory or something, I don't know. Probably there. Hmm. Wait, what? Wait, what's going on? Wait, what? How? I, I can understand that, but how? <clears throat> yeah, she understands now, like, after going through all of this, you know, she herself realizes. Wait, uh, that was really unusual, like, is there any explanation behind that? Like how, or maybe it's just a, uh, you know, like, um, I don't think there's any explanation for this. It's kind of like, uh, you know, like in Jojo's, we have these few things, you know, most of the things have a proper explanation. They kind of explain to us, uh, you know, the, the logic behind it and how the mechanisms and everything, they explain like 90% of all of that. However, there's a few things I've seen like which doesn't really have an explanation. It's just something emotional or something, you know, kind of going against the laws of anything or, you know, because that type of a thing, which doesn't have an explanation proper. It's just, it's just there. I'm guessing this is something like that. Because otherwise, I don't see an explanation for this. It's probably just something, you know, like a you know, father, daughter bond, that kind of an explanation it will be. Or maybe, I don't know, who knows? Let's see. Hmm. All right, there you go. Earth of the Green. What? Oh my god, I was like, what's going on? Is, is this like an enemy attack or something? Was Oh my god, wow. All right. Stop. <laughs> oh. Oh my god. Oh. I'm pretty sure she herself can probably just, you know, Oh no, wait. There you go, like. Wait, what the? Hey, he's, he's gonna fall. Ah, is that his sand power? Okay. What in the hell? Is he like a reptile or something? <laughs> um, like a like a snake or something. I don't know. Oh 
The way he's speaking. Oh my god. Uh Oh my god, the Arrero Arrero is back. Wow, is who is this? This <laughs> is Kakamin. Is that a tree? What in the was oh, it a plant? Oh my god, this show is crazy. Yeah. It's like a plant. Okay, makes sense. Like talking about sunlight and all. Oh my god. Uh the goddamn tree, okay. Oh wow, everyone's okay. Yeah. Oh, there's a bone. Oh, there you go, this guy. Hmm. Okay. Oh my god. Yo. Yeah. Oh god. Oh no. All right, stop. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I can. S yeah. Okay. True. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey. Okay, just don't go and. No, no, no! Oh my god. It's like a zombie movie. What the hell? Except this is plants. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. He can do. Oh. Okay, so it's not something inside her. This is just... I'm turning floral. No, unless and until he touches the bone. Okay. Okay. Yeah, all right. Well. Oh no, sunlight. Move. Move from the sunlight. Yeah. D don't let water fall on her as well. I feel like, you know.
No, getting that bone will... I don't know. Yeah. I guess, but... Oh no. Is that it? Oh my god. Wait, what? That's a that's a Joe Star birthmark. Why is it what? Oh my god, because of Dio being the person ah uh, Dio's body is Jonathan's body. I, I don't think so. It has a goddamn birthmark on it. No, I, I think I understand what's going on. Like, since it's Dio's bone and Dio has Jonathan's body with that birthmark, maybe because of that. I'm, yeah. Like, is this part of the stand or something else? <laughs> okay. Wait, is this actually Dio reincarnating or something? That'll be crazy. One thing I understand. Okay, Anasu's voice is Waver's voice, isn't it? From Fate? I'll have to check it out. <coughs> yeah, that guy, where is he? Oh. Hello there. Who is this? This is a new person. Who is this? One of the inmates? Okay. No, he's planning something. Good job. Yeah, he's planning something to use him as a bait or something. <clears throat> planning to use him. Oh my god, what's he going to do? Uh... Oh, wait, 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 did... Oh, he was searching within him if he's missing. No. No, wait, what? What was that about then? Oh my god. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, he used... He's using him as a... Oh my god. I feel like his stand is inside him. 
और नो वेट यप ही चेंज हिज बॉडी एंड फ्रॉम डी एंड साइड यप गॉड डैम वाओ या हिज स्टैंड इज क्रेजी वॉट इन द वाई इज ई क्राइम लाइक दिस वॉट द Oh, he has survivor. He was the one who had. Oh my! Wow! He took so Anasik took care of two other stand users just like that. That guy is the guy with the helmet, and this survivor. Oh no. Uh <laughs> yeah. Ah. Uh. Oh my God! What in the hell? What is going on? Ah! Yeah. And Oh, that's his stand. Oh my god. Yeah, we need to take this thing with us. He ate the the green child or whatever. Okay. Yeah. So we take him with us. Uh this thing I'm conflicted. I don't know whether he's an ally or an enemy. He looks like a he is an enemy stand, but I don't know. Okay. Oh, thank you. That's quite nice. Wow, he's teaching us everything. <laughs> What? Okay, wow. What the
Oh my god. Okay, what is going on here? All right, so I thought um, that guy, the guy who was crying, and the one with the helmet. I thought he he's neutralized, but it was not written. You know, like you need to uh, keep an eye on that. Whenever someone is actually out of the whole the kind of thing, they usually write down in there, just like how we got for Survivor, like beyond recoverable or something like that, or dead or something like this. They usually write down. So as long as we don't get that, that guy is not out of the picture. I don't know what his name is, but the helmet guy who was crying. And this is his stand. So there you go. Like when, when, when I saw that scene, I was like, oh, like, wow, Anasu just took care of two of them at the same time. No, only one of them, which was Survivor. That guy is still in, in, in the picture. And at least his stand is. I don't know about him. So we'll see. And he's a long, like, you know, long distance stand, you know, it, it doesn't matter how much farther it will get, I'm guessing. So, okay, wow. Hmm. Okay, that is there's something. No, that's it. All right, we begin this episode with Jotaro. Um, you know, kind of connected all those like what do you call those IV drop or whatever you call them. They're connected to his body, and we get to know that he actually kind of woke up. You know, because obviously his his memory is missing. It's not that he himself. His body, his soul is, his soul is inside him, his stand is inside him. So he woke up and he was kind of like looking around, they kind of said, and then he went into this position of like, you know, like a, like a, a monk, like in meditation. And he kind of, you know, like started sleeping or whatever. Now, and that's why obviously since his body is not taking anything, any fluid or whatever, they need to keep him, to keep him, like, to make him uh survive and keep him in his like you know they they're like using all those uh those 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 things connected to his body to provide him the nutrition or, or whatnot i'm guessing and uh yeah so he is in that position so obviously he don't remember anything he, he woke up he didn't even know his name as the doctors say he don't remember anything about his wife, his daughter, you know, like in front of him is like those, those two pictures are there of Jolene and his wife and him, but he, you know, he doesn't remember anything. He has no memories and all that, even after looking at them. So after that, um, <coughs> and obviously he do, has no motiva uh, motivations as well. So his every, like, you know, the values and everything are dropping down. That's why they're keeping him alive like that. Now, there's one of, one of the doctors kind of go and try to touch him or whatever. And like I said, defense mechanism, uh, you know, like uh, his stand comes out and uh, yeah, it, it you know, attacks him. Now, the, the glass breaks and in his hand, it kind of like, you know, like makes, a, makes like letters and all like Jolene and that's what happens now like i said similarly in jolene's like you know like in, in in the in the prison jolene's hand also get like a similar engraving now like i said i am not quite sure but i'm pretty sure this is one of those situations where this probably won't have an explanation it's just a you know just like an emotional or like you know like a thing which has no logic uh mostly in jojo's bizarre adventures everything almost everything 90 95 percent of the stuff here that we get to see has like a proper explanation to it you know they kind of explain the logic and everything behind it but there are a few things that they don't explain which is usually a little bit more emotional or you know like things like this 
you know, more emotional of more emotional type that type of a thing like you know so i'm guessing this is similar to that this probably won't have any explanation and doubt this even has any kind of an explanation the reason why how why jolene's hand also had that same like you know like that engraving i doubt there's an explanation to it uh, it's basically i feel like this is just what i think i feel like this is just like a you know father daughter bond kind of a thing they kind of showed us and it, it won't have an explanation it's more emotional like that type of a thing so just that's just what i i think at least for at this point i don't know maybe in the future we'll get actually get an explanation why this happened and we'll get to see like you know, maybe there's like a twist coming or something who knows <laughs> but i think there's probably nothing deep about this you know, it's just it's just there for a little like you know like a, trying to show us how jolie now understands his, her dad and uh, you know the 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 bond that they have like you know like that she has what, what can i say that that, that has, has happened or that has been created now because obviously as we saw in the beginning jolene was extremely angry at jotaro for you know like not uh coming and spending time with her not only that even when she was in prison and all that you know she got caught he didn't come to see her and uh, all she knew about was her mother she didn't even get to see her father anytime you know before so all these things the grudges and obviously in the in the prison because of that misunderstanding of where she trips and uh, you know the the thing falls uh what, what that thing the that that what, what do you call that 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 thing with the stand uh, arrow in it you know i think that's what happened in part one when it falls his dad went for that and you know it was like oh keep this with you or something like that that misunderstanding also happened she got pissed off at that and she was like oh you don't even care about me and this shows that ah she she understands now why jotaro was not there for her because he never wanted her or her mother to go through all of these things that are happening now if he was with them they would have got involved in these type of situations and since jolene herself is actually experiencing these situations he she she realizes and she properly understands now that what her dad was doing and what she was protecting them from like you know like, like as they say like you know, as, as when you experience something you'll be able to understand them a little more better you know like up until now he just she she didn't know she was mad because she thought her dad did not come to see her you know because deliberately and whatnot but now she knows why she he was not coming since he's really since he's living those experiences he's experiencing she's experiencing all of that that's why she is able to sympathize with her dad more and she understands yeah that that first section was basically the show showing us how jolene actually actually you know like appreciates her dad now that she understands what's going on right now after that we get to see um honestly up to her old uh, up to his old uh, like you know own antics again it's like i was like you know like when he was like oh like you know like foo fighters will you just trip jolene for a moment you know like there's nothing to worry about it's just you know like i, I just want him to do that and i was for the, when he was saying that i was like wait a minute is this like you know is this is something going to happen like is there like someone like you know targeting jolene that's why they you know like he wants to do something to counter that or something i don't know i was thinking of some some you know some some kind of a big brain move behind this you know why he's telling her to do that but then, <laughs> but then he's like oh you, you you saw like you know the previously how i tried to help jolene and it didn't work that way so i want to kind of redo that you know and to do that you need to trip her so that i'll save her and this time you know like <laughs> and ff is like what the hell dude and he's like he's like oh you you promised me you promised me if i helped jolene like you know like you you'll actually not um come like you know like come in the way of like you know me marrying her or whatever or you're going to help me out and now you're not doing that you know are you are you a liar are you don't you keep promises and all that like you know he's saying and ff and i knew when i was like you know, when he was saying all of this i knew something is going to happen and jolene herself will probably handle the situation where 
obviously Anna Sui won't be able to do anything at this point. Turns out that's what happens, but in a different manner, because she trips, and uh, just a sec, where is that part? I think she extends her rope. Yeah, she extends her rope uh, or string and grabs hold of the little man, you know. <laughs> and uh, yeah, there you go. And obviously, like you know, no more, like you know, no more. Like that, that's the end of the whole comedic portion. Now we like suddenly get thrust into, into an actual serious section. And uh, yeah, so this guy has the bone. And uh, Julian obviously tries to go and uh, you know, like grab the bone, but hand, it kind of like you know, the skin goes off and he gets out of the string and runs away towards a part where there's a little sunlight i saw that and i thought maybe he's like a reptile or something you know like a snake or something like that you know kind of slithering away the, the skin kind of like you know like fell down that's why i thought maybe it's like like you know i uh, like skin, uh, snakes mold their skin i thought her his stand was probably something reptile or snake related that's why he's like you know kind of crawling around and like you know that's happening Turns out I was completely off the mark. This this thing is not a snake, it's a goddamn plant. <laughs> and <laughs> God. Like I, I sometimes wonder, like now how can someone come up with these types of scenarios? <laughs> it's so bizarre. Obviously, that's why it's JoJo's bizarre adventure. But it's so bizarre, this scenario. Like, you know, how what how can someone think of this? <laughs> like <laughs> And I'll talk about this again, like you know, the, the thing that comes later on, that, that green thing, that's also so bizarre, like, I feel like as, you know, like at the beginning, like, you know, it started with Hamon, you know, in, in season one, it was Hamon, and everything was like, you know, very normal and stuff, and I feel like as, <laughs> as the sequels keep, like, you know, increasing and increasing, you know, the, the stands and everything and uh, the whole power system is going more crazy and crazy and crazy and more bizarre. Like, it's getting more bizarre and bizarre and bizarre. Like, it started with Hamon, now we have a goddamn plant. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> like... <laughs> like, wow. Like, I can't... <laughs> oh my god. Anyways, um, so yeah, uh, this thing, he's, he's, he's trying to get underneath the sun. Obviously, because he's a plant, he's trying to photosynthesize or whatever. And everyone comes behind him and uh, points the gun at him. And uh, oh my god! Now <laughs> he starts doing red or red or red, and I'm like, oh my god! <laughs> Not again! <laughs> oh, god. oh my god! Wow! And okay, so his eyes become like a flower. There's a tree branch coming out of his mouth and he's he's trying to like you know get more sunlight so yeah this thing is a plant so it doesn't stop there mm. jolin is like where is the bone he was hand like, you know, he was kind of holding it and it's, it's gone now i cannot find it and not only him but every every inmate who's dead here uh like, you know, things start growing out of their body like kind of the like the whole um <clears throat> just a sec yeah the whole um what do you call it body transforms into a tree not only his but all the inmates all of them who are dead i'm guessing and uh, now wait a minute this this thing was alive at the beginning wasn't it oh i'm guessing uh this stand probably changes all these people into like a plant okay yeah, I was going to say, oh, I, I think like all the dead people, they probably get transformed into plants. No, that's not the case because Jolene also got affected by it. So the people are normal at the beginning. As soon as they touch the bone, they, they get transformed into this. Something like that, I'm guessing. Okay, so yeah, everyone's becoming a plant and uh, his eyes become like a flower and everything and everyone's like you know like the tree trunks and everything are going growing for all the inmates who are like not on the floor and uh, now jolene is obviously trying to find the bone where it is because it's completely missing 
and uh, the bone is apparently in front of that guy the, the guy with the helmet and he's thinking he's like oh like you know if i come in contact with the bone i'll probably become like this so i should not do that and he's kind of thinking because his main goal is to as he says like you know my main goal is to uh, kill jolene so i'm not going to do anything other than that i'm not touching this uh, bone in case i turn into a tree and you know he's kind of thinking of all of that while jolene you know is kind of moving towards the sunlight to see where the bone is and you know the thing starts coming out of her face she's becoming a tree and anasi stops her and anasi's like what the hell like you know just a sec and he he goes and he starts now you know, the way he checks is so he starts sniffing her mouth like oh my god I understand he was trying to get to the whiff of like you know maybe something like you know he's trying to get like a to understand if he, she's actually turning into a plant or something so yeah and he comes to the conclusion that you probably touched the bone which yeah we can see that happening because she used her stand to grab hold of that person and the person had that bone maybe somewhere or the other the bone probably touched her string that's how he, she also got this now the thing about this stand is we as it's established later on this is not like you know like this is not like a uh, like a stand which kind of moves from one person to another it's like you know if you touch jolene nothing's going to happen to you you know nothing's going to happen only the you only become going to become a tree if you touch the bone so from victim to victim it, it it's not propagating it's only propagating from the bone in itself so it won't be a problem if you touch jolene you know nothing will happen to you but if you touch the bone you're going to become a tree there's something like that that is established later on we get to see that uh, but either way um so yeah now the bone is in front of like you know them and jolene again tries to go get the bone and Anasu tries to stop her and he's like, what are you doing? Like, don't go into the sunlight. You know, you, you're, you're going to become a tree like that. And you've also been infected. But, you know, Jolene tries to get it and uh, Anasui quickly, since, since it was getting out of control, the tree, Anasui uses his stand to probably help her out from the inside. Now, the problem here is he, and after using his stand on her, he realizes that this is not something inside her as he says it's not correct or proper to say yank it out or it's growing ff um the body is actually being transformed into it so basically this is not something inside her body that's making her become like this it's basically her whole body in a whole is becoming a tree you cannot yank it out or you cannot stop something inside her body or rearrange something inside her body to stop this it's not going to happen you know, this is she's basically becoming a tree you know and you cannot stop it her body is transforming like as he said I, I i can't simply rip something off to stop this and jolene is not feeling any pain she's like oh it's nothing you know, like nothing feels normal and here she says like you know like i touched that bone so i don't think you should be touching me but you know like uh he he tastes one of the buds of the plant and then he comes to the conclusion i'm guessing that yeah this is not something that propagates from victim to victim propagates from the actual thing someone so if you touch someone a victim who is being affected by this nothing's going to happen to you but if you touch the bone you're going to become like that so there's no problem and he says i don't know what kind it is but i do know that instead of blood no wait uh, just a sec let me go back a little bit more um okay yeah he tastes the plant and he says this is simply a plant there's nothing more to it than that i don't know what kind it is but i do know that instead of blood running through your veins there's chlorophyll just know i'm going to do something about okay so there you go since chlorophyll is like you know in, in his in her body you know like and all that so that's why she's basically becoming a plant it's, it's nothing no like you know 
thing, nothing that is going to propagate from one person to another. And I'm guessing that's also the reason why as soon as she's going underneath sunlight is you know, the growth is increasing and all that. Now, okay, so he kind of takes her out of the sunlight and he says like, oh, don't go towards the sunlight. It's going to, you know, make it grow. And Julian is still trying to find the bone and uh, she finally comes across a little tree inside which the bone is and the bone has a star mark inside it kind of looking like a fetus now here obviously like the biggest i feel like the biggest speculation everyone would probably come after seeing this scene is that obviously since this is dio's bone and uh, you know and uh, technically since dio's bone means jonathan's bone you know since uh, the only part of Dio that Dio had was his head, the whole body was Jonathan's body. That's also the reason why he got the star mark. So that's why maybe since this bone was a part of his body, maybe that's why this bone has like a star mark or something like, or this fetus that is growing from the bone or whatever has a star mark. So now the question is that what is this thing? You know? Like, is this like a, I don't know, like a, like a, like a, I, I don't know, like, it's like re reincarnating again into like a thing or something. Like, is that's what's happening here? Or is this something else? Like, it's part of the bone and it's growing into a fetus, which is, which is obviously weird. <laughs> but there's no explanation still. I'm sure we'll get an explanation after this. And I feel like this is also the reason why um what's his name um pucci wanted someone to you know wanted uh what's his name uh sports max yeah wanted sports max to use his ability on the bone i don't know maybe do something like this or like this is like his end goal to re resurrect dio or something and also like you know kind of reach heaven that's also like his you know thing which Dio told him that you know like reaching heaven is the only like you know the, the thing that every man should every person should at least experience once in their life I think that's what he said something like that so I feel like that's also like one of his goal obviously that's the, the main goal but at the same time he's also trying to resurrect Dio back or something I don't know because otherwise what what else could this be you know he, he, he had Dio's bone and he plans on doing something with it he used sports max and told him that oh use your ability on this you know most max ability being invisible zombies so obviously i'm thinking like oh maybe he's trying to bring dio back like this or something like that he's trying and now that we are seeing in this episode that there's a there's like a like a like a little fetus kind of thing with that birthmark in it and i'm like oh, oh my god like is this is this actually pucci's plan or pucci's goal coming into like you know fruition is, is this actually happening is, is he succeeding in whatever he's trying to do so who knows we'll see like we don't even know if this is actually something related to the bone or not i'm pretty sure it is something related to the bone otherwise why would it have that birthmark but anyways um so yeah this thing is growing inside the tree or whatever so interesting so ah i can see one thing that the the tree or the tree like all of like you know, the thing is actually feeding it i think like you see in i can see that uh, scene again that little like you know, it looks like a womb you know like the mother's womb inside it is like that little fetus and like in a fetal position just like how babies are and you can see there's like little like you know like things connected to his back his hand his like you know everything is kind of connected and the tree is spreading so maybe the tree is actually gathering more nutrition you know from i don't know from all the different people who are dead from the sunlight is photosynthesizing and all the nutrition and everything is going into the little baby or the little fetus inside the tree and it's basically kind of feeding it 
so that it's it's going to go bigger and bigger and it's it, it's going to be born or something i don't know i i think that's basically what's happening because obviously like you know like i said it looks like a womb you know my mother's womb inside it's like the little baby and even the like you know like the outer part of the mm, uh you know what do, what do you call it the outer part of the the transparent section it's kind of like a little it's like a little layer in it which kind of looks like uh, what do you call them i think am, amniotic fluid is that called amniotic fluid let me check like you know the 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 the, the thing that is in the ut uterus of a mother amniotic fluid there you go yes correct uh a liquid yellowish liquid that surrounds the unborn baby fetus during pregnancy there you go you know that little like you know that little smooth section the transparent section that we were seeing it kind of looks like a, there's like a layer of something on top of it it kind of looks like that i feel like so this is basically the tree is basically kind of like i don't know like the outer vessel of a mother or something and inside it is this little baby and the tree is feeding it or something like that is happening i don't know so so basically the tree and the bone is like it's kind of like a it's kind of like i don't know it's kind of merged or something and this is what's happening now interesting i wonder what the tree actually is about it's I, it's i'm pretty sure it's a standability whose standability is that we still don't know about it so yeah anyways um so there you go this weird little Fruit baby probably absorbed the bone while it was germinating. Okay, it absorbed the bone. Alright, and that's why all the bone is okay, okay. And uh, white snake is here somewhere inside this prison to find out uh, okay. What will come out of this board? He's here because he wants to know what begins when it's finally born. There you go. So like I said, uh White Snake's uh another goal is to see what is going to be born from this bone because he was trying to get force max also to use his ability on it now that this is happening he's probably interested in seeing what's going to go ha happen after this okay now after that we see um jolene okay i need to check this part jolene takes okay Julian takes the whole thing, you know, with the little, the, the, the plant, uh, like, you know, little plant, uh, like, you know, the, the, the bark on whatever you call it, that thing, the whole thing with the baby inside it, she, she, she takes the whole thing and keeps it with her. So, okay. Now, I do wonder if it's still going to keep feeding it. Yeah, I guess, because, you know, like, this, this little thing has like a flower on top of it i'm pretty sure it's going to keep feeding the baby inside using the sunlight and all that and uh, the baby is going to keep growing inside or whatever but anyways um they okay they, they try to get out of here and uh, while they're trying to get out they find this guy you know this guy who's freaking out and he's like, oh, everyone died. Everyone become a, became grass and all that. Like, you know, help me. I'm, I'm not going to do anything. I'm, I'm innocent and all that. He's just, you know. And Anas is like, okay, so you there, come over here. And as soon as he said that, I was like, all right, he's going to probably use him as a bait or something. He's going to just use him. <laughs> and yeah, that's what he did. He kind of like, you know, brings him in front of him. His name is Guccio, I think that's what he says. Yeah. And uh, he, he's like, come here and puts his hand on his body and uh, okay wait what does he say here oh uh 12 pair of ribs 24 in total okay uh regardless of people's gender weight or height it's the same for everyone that's why he was saying that I was like, why is he saying that? Because he made him, he, he changed his whole body into like a trap. God damn. <laughs> and he's like, alright, you, go. Go out, go away. I don't need you anymore. And he goes on his way outside. Now, one thing I do wonder, why did he start acting like that? Like, I can understand his whole body became like a, like a human death trap. 
but why did he listen to Anasu? You know, when Anasu said, "Oh, you go, get him. like no need for you here anymore," and he started following his order. Why? That's the question I have. Like, is that also part of Anasu's power or something? Did he do something to the brain, or I don't know? <laughs> but anyways, he's just he just left. And I was pretty sure he did something to him, but I was wondering what. And we get to see what he does after this. But before that, um, you know, like uh, Jolie and the Foo Fighters, they are like, all right, we need to get out of here. And uh, he honestly uses his stand to kind of like, you know, help him out. And uh, okay. You now the other guy, the helmet guy, he's like, what the hell is happening here? We see like a little green child. You know, and uh, he's like, my only uh, mission here is to get rid of Jolene permanently. And I'm going to do that. I'm here for that only. And he sees this guy, the death trap guy, coming. Guccio, I think that's his name. And he's like walking like a zombie. And I'm like, this is a thing that I'm, I'm, I'm curious about. What happened? He was, he was acting like a normal human being. Before, unless you did something to him, I can understand the whole death trap thing inside his body. But why did he start obeying his orders? Like, what's up with that? I don't understand. Like I said, maybe he did something to his brain or something. I don't know. And he's like, the, the helmet guy is like, what the hell are you doing? I saw the other three people touches him and stops him from going forward. And yeah, his whole body like kind of, kind of explodes, the whole ribs kind of get him. And goddamn, this guy's hand is just destroyed completely. Like in that way. And yeah, and that was goddamn human death trap. Now here is where I like you know we get to see Jolene and everyone is outside. Um uh, Anasu is looking towards the, the, the place. This guy started crying and he's like, It hurts, help me, mama. My left arm is useless. And um, the Guccio just, just goes and, you know, like walking around like a zombie. And we see the survivor behind him. Now, this explains who had survivor with him. This guy was the one, he was the stand user. So in the end, they kind of show the survivor uh, beyond recovery. So now here is where I came to the conclusion that, oh my God, like honestly, it's crazy. You know, he, he got two people in one, like in, without even doing much things. You know, he, he took care of survivor. Not only that, he used survivor as a um, moving trap to, not survivor, but Guccio, as a moving trap to get, you know, like to, to injure um, the other guy. And he's also probably out of the picture. Turns out, no. Like I said, always, whenever, like, you know, if someone is actually out of the picture, in the end, they'll kind of write, you know, and, and tell us that, oh, beyond recovery or dead or something else. They're, they're always going to write all of that. But nothing of that happened for that guy. So Survivor is gone. It was already written in the end. But we don't know about this guy. That's why... After that, we see this guy's stand came out and is going to do something to us. But either way, um, still, that doesn't take out the fact that what he did was impressive. <laughs> like he, he just used one person as a human death trap and attacked another person in that way. And he was able to get away of there with everyone just that easily. It's crazy. Now, outside, Jolene is like seeing the, the little plant thing. And he's, she's saying that this thing is withering away and she's like, oh, I'm going to keep this with me. And uh, because Pale's, uh, White Snake is going to probably going to try to get this back to him. And that's how I'm going to lure him out or something like that. Jolene was planning. Now, suddenly, okay, what the hell happened here? Jolene is talking about like, you know, he's going to use White Snake like that and take dad's memory disc back from him. Suddenly, we see this green thing eating the, 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 the fetus or whatever. Jolene doesn't even realize that. Okay, um...
Yeah, he so he basically grabbed it out of his hand and started eating it, and Julian didn't even realize it. Okay. Now this thing, we still don't know what this thing actually is. If Julian starts beating it up, you know, not only that, starts starts kicking it. Uh, FF also starts attacking it. Um, Anasui does that. Anasui puts his uh, stand inside of him and he says, what's going on with his body? The stench of him. And yeah, this thing is weird. But anyways, <laughs> so Anasui cannot do it anything, do anything to it from the inside. Now, after that, we see this, this thing starts polishing Jolene's shoes, making a chair, giving him, giving her manga. And, you know, it's like, uh, and he's like, ah, uh, like, you know, what do you want? Like, you know, like I'm, like, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to help you out. And uh, he's saying, let me tell you about my master. First off, his name is Danji. What? Danji. Dianji. The last I saw of him was in the discipline ward. His left arm was bleeding mess and he was bawling like a helpless baby. And this is where I realized this thing is actually that guy's stand. So that guy is still not out of the picture. He's probably out of the picture or something. I don't know. Or maybe this is part of his power or whatever. But his stand is still there. So yeah. So this thing is a still a threat. So now they're going to, the, the, the police authorities are like, you know, they're, they're going to come in and like, you know, like, they're like probably going to, if they find Jolene and all of them again, her sentence is again going to increase. So we can't let that happen. So we need to get out. And obviously this guy has actually eat, like, you know, eaten the, um, the, the fetus thing. So, okay. Um, interesting one thing i realized here so yeah well, we need to get out of here with this guy the interesting thing he says here he says here is how to differentiate wild strawberries the yellow one is a mock strawberry you so you really can't eat it i feel like that's some kind of a hint towards his ability I saw that one of the uh, one of the strawberries was red, one was yellow. His eye also one of his eye is red, one of his eye is yellow. I don't know, maybe it's connected somehow. Like I'm I'm trying to find out what happened to FF in the end. Why was her mouth completely just like you know just completely just destroyed? What happened there? I, I'm trying to figure that out. You know, did did he eat did she eat something or something what happened that that happened that's why you know like i'm, I'm trying to find some connection and uh, this part kind of uh like you know, is, is making me suspicious him talking about strawberries red and yellow and his eyes are also kind of red and yellow i don't know if that's like just a coincidence or that's actually somehow connected to his power now Anas is like, FF tell that weirdo we have to take him with us. You go find the main body and when you do, blow him out. And this thing just starts following Jolene and everyone without even like, you know. And they go to like a, take a boat and honestly cannot do and like, you know, it's not able to start the boat and this thing just tells us how to start a boat and what to do and all of that and he's like oh i'm going to help you out like you do this shift the neutral uh, gear to neutral and then you do this then you do that and like explains it and then just the boat starts and he's like here you go it's listening to us but there's something going on which ff says later on ff says jolene don't you dare take your eyes off that stand and uh, says and we can see that it's like part of her face is gone as long as you have got him under your watch he'll be an excellent servant which is interesting so basically he's he's like a what can i say like if you're able to 
use him properly, he'll be a good ally. But if you become a little careless, you know, in front of him, lower your guard a little bit, he's going to get you. He's going to completely just destroy you from the inside or like something like that is going to happen. He's creepy, but he'll be useful. However, if you give him any leeway, Yeah, and we see FF's face is gone. Now, thankfully, FF is not like, you know, like, you know, her, her body, he can just, she, she can just put the plankton back in. She's fine. If, but if this happened to someone else, the person's whole face would probably go blow up or something would have happened and it would have been unrecoverable. Since this is FF, she can just recover that, that part of the face back again. Now she says, there is, this is way worse than I imagine. Jolene Anasui, don't take your eyes off for this monster for even a second. Like, there is it, there you go. So I'm trying to find out what the hell happened. Like, why is FF's face bone blown off? The only thing that I can see is looking a little bit suspicious in this whole section is how, um, his eyes kind of are similar to the strawberries that he was showing. He talks about how not to eat like the yellow strawberry or whatnot, he says. And then there's also another weird thing that is going on. That is this thing eats everything. Like whatever he's finding, he's just eating it. And FF's face is gone, you know, which maybe it has a connection. You know, him eating something and FF's face blowing up. I don't know but the thing that he she said is kind of interesting which i don't know like which i feel like i feel like he could probably be useful as a good like you know as an ally I'll, just like how foo fighters said that if you keep an eye on him he'll be a good good ally a good servant or whatever but if you show him a little bit of leeway he'll 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 get you so maybe we can actually make use of this thing you know, even though it's an enemy stand or something like that we'll see you know we'll see but yeah i'm i'm very curious about what this thing is you know, what what type of power is this so yeah i'm i'm pretty sure we'll get to know in the next few episodes probably the next episode in itself tomorrow i'll react to it so yeah i'll probably get to know there it'll tell us but either way this thing is interesting you know and uh, yeah so there you go that's it that was my reaction to Jojo's Bizarre Adventure Storm Motion Part 2 episode number 7. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to press the like button. Right? If you're new to this channel or you haven't subscribed, comment down below anything you want to say, anything you want to let me know. And I'll check them out. That is it guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow with another episode of Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. So until then, goodbye and have a nice day.